Good morning and welcome to church. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. It's lovely to see so many familiar faces in front of me. And we know that many more are joining us on, with the service online. Welcome, one and all. To all those on Zoom, we miss your presence here in church. We would love to see you. And for the call to worship, I'm going to read Psalm 146. Praise to the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them, the Lord who remains faithful forever. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the alien and sustains the fatherless and the widow, but he frustrates the ways of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever, your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, be with us today as we worship you. Calm our restless minds and let us focus on you, the one true God. Amen. Let's stand and worship by singing praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation.
That hymn was written in the late 17th century and the language may be rather outdated, but the sentiment still applies today. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do. Nothing is impossible for God. What a reminder for all of us. Let's pray. Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise his name forevermore. For endless days, we will sing your praise. O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. We love you, Lord. You go before us in everything. You prepare in advance all the steps we need to take, whether at work, at home, in our relationships, in our finances, you care for our health. We love and trust you. Thank you that you are consistent despite our inconsistency. You pour out grace and mercy when we least deserve them. Such undeserved loving kindness can only come from a good father to his wayward children. Lord, today we honour you, Father, Son and Spirit. You care for us in so many ways. We welcome your presence here today. We long to see your glory and power in action. Thank you for saving us. Amen. Let's stand and sing, we'll walk the land. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you today with heavy hearts. We know where we have failed you in the past week. The times we haven't declared our belief in you for fear of what others may think. 
the times when we've said the wrong thing or done the wrong thing, the times when we try everything else to solve our problems and then say, the only thing left is prayer. Prayer should be our first port of call on any journey. There have been times when we haven't felt your presence. Have you deserted us? But the answer may be that we haven't been still before the Lord. We haven't been listening for the still, small voice. Forgive us. Forgive us when we get in the way with our ideas, our agendas. You alone are God. We are your children. We're no longer slaves to fear. We are children of God. In Isaiah, the Lord says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Forgive us, Lord, when we forget that. Thank you for ministering your grace to each one of us. We are so undeserving, but so grateful. You cleanse us, you heal us, you prepare us to do your work here on earth. Thank you. Amen. The reading today, the first reading comes from Exodus chapter 40 beginning at verse 34. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting, because the cloud had settled upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. In all the travels of the Israelites, Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel during all their travels. The second reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand and sing, Be Still for the Presence of the Lord.
Good morning. Are you well this morning? It's so nice to see you. Um, it's really a blessing to be worshiping with you today. And um, thank you to the worship team. Um, God is doing amazing things and very, very grateful for his mercy and grace. We welcome as well people who are online. Um, it's one of the wonders of God that uh, the two groups of people could merge together in worship of God as we worship God together. And as Rosie has said, we, we pray and long um, for this season to pass and that we can be together um, again. Uh, praying that as the all out for vaccine happens, so that it will reach many of our people. Because I know that others have told me that before we are vaccinated, no way will you see us at church. And we, we pray that the process will continue to happen. I'm sure many of you have done Alpha and you, you will remember Nikki Gamble talking about this life and saying that in this life we are immediately put on stage. Um, we, we have a dress rehearsal. And in some ways, we are being prepared for the life to come. We are being taught how the life in the kingdom will be. And, and I think for me, having gone through these readings today, it's a reminder of this place where God has put us in this season. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We have been following the theme, all things new, and today we are looking at the new temple and God inviting us and us being open to let God into our lives. When we read the Old Testament, temple was a holy place. It was set apart for worship, for prayer, and for the presence of God. And when we read the New Testament, we, we are told that 
we have become the dwelling place of God. In Ephesians 2, 21, 22, Paul declares that we are growing up into the temple of the Lord to be his dwelling place. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become the holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling place in which God lives by his spirit. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, Paul will ask, do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? When you received from God, you are not your own you are you were bought with a price therefore honor god with your bodies rosie have read two sections of from two uh, places in the bible exodus and and revelation exodus chapter 40 comes to the end of the book and it ends where history will end. It ends with the descent of Jehovah's glory coming to dwell with man. And we read that in Revelation 21, 1 to 3. They all help us to reflect on some of the significant experiences of people in the Old Testament. And he take us through some of those experiences. He said, we have seen Israel in bondage. We have seen and beheld its redemption. We have followed it through the wilderness. We have heard the thunder when the law was given at Mount Sinai. We have witnessed the nation entering into covenant with God. We have seen the shameful apostasy of the nation. We have traced the steps of reconciliation. And how that reconciliation is effected and put into place. We have had the instruction given for the building of the tabernacle. We have seen the tabernacle itself. We have seen the Ark of the Covenant. We have seen how the symbols that God uses to for his glorious presence in the midst of his people. What a wondrous success succession of subjects we have thus had before us in the course of our journey in the Old Testament. The intoler intolerable anguish of the oppressed nation of Israel. We have seen the birth of the one who will deliver them. We have seen failures we have seen tragic events. We have seen an incredible rescue of people of God, people of God. As they embark on this exodus going, crossing the Red Sea. We have seen the miracle of the parting of the Red Sea. So in, in all what we have seen, we have seen the nation going up, going down, battling, struggling. We have seen a nation in deep longing to to reach out, 
to God who has extended a hand wanting to embrace them. We have seen the mercy of God just taking his people through difficult times, watching over them day and night. As we will say in, in the study of Bethel, that the whole mystery of the Old Testament, it was God schooling his people to trust him. No matter it's in the middle of war and we see bloodshed, or in the midst of a devastating experience for the Israelites. It's when people begin to rebel against God. When we see the apostasy of nations, God was teaching his people that there is no way to go. There is nothing that you can do on your own. You have to come to me. You have to learn from me. You have to trust me. Because I love you. I care deeply for you. I will be with you. I will never leave you alone. I will always cover you. And this is, this is what God is doing for us. He's doing for us for me and for you, for the world in which we live today. See, the book of Revelation, you will remember that John is in the island of Patmos. And God has taken John into an incredible confidence about the mysteries of heaven. So he showed John beforehand some of the events that, that will happen. So those events happen in visions that he sees. And we have read as the Bible come to a close, And maybe that is what uh, O was saying in Exodus, that at the beginning, we see the mystery and the revelation of God into the lives of his people. And uh, the very same story will be repeated in the end. But here, John is allowed to see what is going to happen in the end, what life is going to be like. And maybe I would like to dwell a little bit on this before I come back to our life again and just help us to understand what God is saying to us as his new temple. John is given the opportunity to see a new heaven and a new earth. And it's said that because the old earth and the old heaven have disappeared. And reading this quite closely, it does not mean that the old earth and the old heaven have been made again, remade. As we read and study and listen to the text, it says it is, it's a new one. The old have disappeared. Some of the commentators will say that uh, the old earth and the, and the old heaven are going to perish in fire, 
so that God bring up this new heaven and new earth. But here it is quite clear that it is a new one. And there will be no longer any sea. One of the interesting things when, when we read, I know that we love the sea, we enjoy the sea. It's just a beautiful thing to watch. But, but here, the sea is seen as a great separator of nations. You know, when, when you read in, the old, in, the, in Revelation, whenever there were things, um, you know, a dragon will come out of the sea. Um, the, the forces of darkness will come out of the sea. So it was in this context, the scene as the great divider of people. It, although it formed boundaries between the kingdom, between continents and between races, what comes quite clear here is the divisions that the sea is making. And John says that in this new heaven and the new earth, there will be no longer any sea. And what it means is that anything that divides God's people will no longer be there. There will be nothing that divides God's people. You know, we, we will no longer look at people and see social classes. We will look at people and there will be no longer prejudice that we have. There, there will be no longer any sectarianism in terms of denominations. You know, things that we, that we hold quite special now. Um, I, I have seen, I mean, you will have heard from politicians saying that once we get to heaven, we will go to the nearest place and look for the ANC branch in heaven. There will be no ANC branch there. Oh, the, there will be a Presbyterian church and congregate. There will be no Presbyterian and congregational church. There will be no black and white. All things that divides God's people, the sea will no longer be there. <laughs> it's it's a conversation with the phone here. Might have had something that I said, and it says it's an interesting question. I'm not sure that picked up the <laughs> Marty Solomon, it's, it's a scholar, and um, do the Banner pod, Discipleship pod, Podcast. And help us to, to understand the meaning of the tabernacle. Because when we, when we understand that we are the tabernacle, that God lives in us, that the Holy Spirit of God lives in us. So because God's Spirit lives in us, we, we need to be people who, who live their lives according to the values and the standards of the kingdom. Because we are kingdom people. During the 
serious times of, of turmoil in our land in South Africa. I remember um, having a um, visiting Johannesburg um, as representing the young people in the free state coming to the SACC conference. One, we got one book there that spoke about the church as an alternative society. And, and you see, that is the kingdom intention about the church. That as we live in the midst of the world and the sinfulness in the world, the church will be a place where the world is able to see what the kingdom should look like. So the kingdom will, the church will represent that place where we, we don't have conflicts, we, we love one another, there is peace, uh, the God reigns in the lives of his people. And, and Betty Marty Solomon says that the purpose of the tabernacle was to be a mobile Genesis 1. A place where heaven met earth so that God could commune with his people. So we, the intention is that we will be people who demonstrate the connectedness between heaven and earth and God working through us to effect these powerful transforming events and activities in the lives of his people. So that in turn, in turn, they, they impact the lives of people in society. So that society resembles more and more a place where God lives. Remember, when you work and you walk in the world, you are taking God to different corners of the earth because he lives in you. You are forever an ambassador of the kingdom wherever you are planted. The way you carry yourself, the way you talk, the way you interact, the way you deal, you are the ambassador of the kingdom. You speak for your master. You bring into effect the understanding that my kingdom is not from this world. So the kingdom that you represent is not from this world. And the orders that you have given, given, you have been given, are not orders that resemble any orders that we see in this world. I was going through um, articles in a, got a question. It's, it's a, um, a religious, a biblical, in fact, um, institution that help a Christian to deal with questions that, that they have and questions that are being asked. And something quite interesting was said in that. It says if, if God meant simply to convey the idea that the spirit lives within the believer, he could well have used the words such as home or house or residence. But 
God chose to say that this body is not a house. It's not a residence. It's a temple. Which conveys the meaning that I, I dwell in that place. I dwell in you. It conveys the, the meaning and the idea that our bodies are forever a shrine or a sacred place in which the spirit not only lives, but is worshipped, is revered, and it is honored. Therefore, how we carry ourselves had a huge impact. The way we think, the way we speak, and what we let through into the temple of God, our eyes, our ears, it becomes critical in terms of continuing to be places that God lives and we, the people that God works through us to impact and to touch the world in which we live. In Ephesians 4, we are instructed not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Paul mentioned that they must get rid of all bitterness, all rage, all anger, all brawling, all slander, along with every form of malice. And he says this is what you need to do. You need to be compassionate. You need to be kind. You need to love one another. You need to forgive each other. Just as Christ has forgiven you. And when we live by the Spirit, we no longer gratify the desires of our sinful nature. But we seek to honor and to glorify God with our lives. I, I long that we will have these experiences. Because there is no doubt that God is pushing us into a new world. And as we move into a new world, we need to rediscover who we are. That we, we are more than what we have thought about ourselves. We are more than things that we have taken for granted in our lives. The Holy Spirit lives in us. God himself has taken residence in each and every one of us. So that he will dwell in his temple. And don't ever forget that. Where, wherever you are. Whenever you deal with people. And even when a taxi come cut across you. And. You forget for a little bit. You want to respond to that situation. Maybe stop a little bit and remember that I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. And what I need to do is to handle the situation like 
an ambassador of Christ. And wherever you are, you know, when the evil one tried to push you away from the vision of the kingdom, just remember that. Just always remember in your life who you are. Because we are planted here now to transform the world so that it reflected the image of God. I was listening this morning, well, this morning coming to church, listening to the news, and quite interesting thing by the ANC branch in Ecolo Learning. They were saying that they want to approach the ANC to review their policy uh, on sightlining people who are having challenges, who are facing charges. And they are saying that it has to be reviewed. And, and well, the bottom line is that um, we want you to practice double standard because a lot of people are involved here. We are going to hurt many people and it's going to be mess. And life as God calls us, it's life that model the kingdom always. I pray that God will, will give us strength, will give us the ability as we allow and open ourselves for him to live in us, as we understand the, the implications of us being the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are not our own. We belong to him. Amen. Your offerings for the Lord's work will now be received. Remember that we come and, and uh, place our offering in the offering plate here. Father, we are grateful that whatever we, we have, we have received from you. Whatever we, we are able to give, you have first gifted those to us. And we thank you, we glorify your name.
we stand in awe of how you are able to provide for our needs. Thank you that you honor our obedience in such a beautiful way. And so Lord, we celebrate the incredible gift of the kingdom to us. As we understand the meaning of Paul in Ephesians, when he say that we were chosen in Christ before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in your sight. And through that, emphasizing our adoption as sons of the kingdom. And here this morning, we again hear that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That you live in us. That you work through us. That you touch the world through us. That you transform the world through us. And that we, we need to understand the sanctity in which you place on these bodies. Because they need to reflect the sanctity of the kingdom. And so, Father, we, we place ourselves in your hands. We know how we, we often fail and miss the mark. And live our lives contrary to the precepts that you have set before us. That at times we, we don't glorify you. And our lives don't bring glory and honor to your name. Because precisely that is what you are doing in us. That the world will see your work in us. Yeah, the world will see how we handle ourselves and how we deal with issues that we face ourselves. Because whatever we do has to model what the kingdom is like. And so, Father, we, we bring with us the brokenness of the world. The pain and the sadness that others go through. We're very conscious of relationships that, that are strained. People who, who are lonely. People who live with the belief that no one cares for them. People who are desperately looking for love. And at times, end up in wrong places, looking for love in wrong places. People who are battling to make ends meet. 
because of other they they are constrained that have been laid of them by the finances and the economy people who are looking for for jobs people who just long to experience and to hear the whisper in their ears that they are loved and they are cared for deeply people who are sick people who who are suffering because of illness they can't do anything for themselves depending on others father we we think of the world that is going through a difficult and tough time with the pandemic and father we we are looking at the desperate situation in india and we we want to bring them before you as the the health department begin to collapse under the buckle of the strain of covid-19 and further for for the government that is gradually losing control of the situation father how painful it is to see people who are battling for oxygen and there is quite a few that is available and lot we we leave them before you we pray father that you will enable them just to restore and to control the situation and so father we we continue to trust in you we continue to depend on your goodness because we know that we are dearly loved and the father who loves us care deeply for us we pray this in jesus name our lord and our savior amen well we going to sing the the last one are we accompanied or not accompanied not accompanied oh and the congregation can join you well the next song is a vernacular song sung in Xhosa called Mandihambe nawe Yesu which is very much aligned to today's sermon and it basically translates to let me walk with you jesus in all my paths let me hear your voice at all times my lord and the chorus goes something like fear not my soul in the company of my king i will follow without hesitation when he god says walk behind me Mandi ha mena we Yesu, buzo zoki jelo zo.
Negotiations with uh, Ross Howard. I'm sure some of you know um, who um, runs a music school and has been part of St. Mungo's family uh, in the past. And he will join us with, with the team, and our team here, they will start leading worship music, worship. Um, as we worship God on Sundays, but they will come twice a month, and we we are hoping that God will continue to work uh, beautiful things at the in the life of 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 St. Mungus. And then on the 16th of May, I want you to diarize this day. We will be visited by the Mayfair Presbyterian Church. Um, they. Uh, will bring the, our worship team here and the congregation uh, to come and worship. And the, the, their team will then lead us in, in worship on that day. And the moderator, their minister is the moderator of the presbytery. Um, he, will, he will bring the word of God to us on that, on that day. So it will be, it will be wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful time of worship, a day to that. Uh, you have to diarize, you will have to receive and welcome visitors on that day uh, in our midst. And then you will have seen if you have received uh, the newsletter that uh, there, there were two appointments uh, that were made to the council. One, the secretary of the church council, uh, Ngozi Ndlofu, resigned uh, because of, of the pressure as a new mother and work and the studies. And the council appointed uh, Nomzamo, Nomzamo uh, Kanila to be the new uh, church council secretary. And we have also appointed Alan Swart to be the administration committee convener here at St. Mangus. And I, I hope that you will give them your cooperation when, whenever they, they need. Uh, your participation 
in affairs and activities of St. Mangos. It has been wonderful worshiping with you today. I pray that as you go back home, you will remember that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God lives in you and that you will live in the world to bring glory and honor to him. Don't forget that there is a card that we are signing for Mango and anything that you want to write on the card in the foyer. Let us receive the blessing. Um, Sibo and Pelani, thank you so much for, uh, for leading. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and always. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.